which makes it very, very hard to have a centralized security program. Anybody who's worked in the banking arena for long knows what I'm talking about. The next big thing, which is quite a you know, annoying thing about this industry is that development is often outsourced. The unfortunate thing is labor is cheap and developers are even cheaper. Um, you can get a room for the developers for $4 a day. So, and banks are using this. So what they're doing is they're outsourcing all the development to certain countries up there in the map of the world, and you get a thousand people all coding your application. The problem is, what we've experienced at Corsair, is the majority of time, these developers do not have industry experience. We've expected that these developers are brought in as an industry stopgap. They finish you know, university, they've maybe got their software engineering degree, and now they're put onto a development site and say, right, let's build an internet bank, which is where the problems start happening. And the other big beef is security consultancies are not discovering the vulnerabilities. I'm not talking about your basic SQL injection and cross-site scripting. To be honest, I don't expect those bugs to exist today. I have no reason why they should exist, but they still do. So the agenda, what we're going to talk about today, um, this is not going to be a, a heavy, in-depth technical talk. Um, I expect people here don't want to hear that at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm still quite jet-lagged, so you're not going to get too techy. We're going to be looking at authentication, authorization, mathematical operations. Uh, I can see a, bit of, a few people getting worried here. Validation routines, and then logging and attack detection. I'm going to touch on a few topics there and then talk to you about the things that we've seen over the past four years, assessing applications, and hopefully give everybody else an idea of what they need to start looking at when it comes to testing applications. So the first stage that any tester has to do is look at the application. And this is probably one of the fundamental things that a lot of testers aren't doing. If you're jet lagged like me and you can't sleep, here's some amazing bedtime stories. Because these are really boring. You will fall asleep. But there is a reason why these exist. And if you are testing financial applications, you should kind of know some of these. In the UK and Europe, you've got the Financial Services Authority. They are guaranteed to strike fear in any bank. So kind of know, their, you know what they want, what they expect from the application. You've got in the US sarbanes Opti, you've got the Data Protection Act. UK government has a problem with Data Protection Act. They keep on losing loads of people's data. They don't really care. They've made the law. And then you've got the new cash cow, which is the PCI standard. Uh, the other standards, which are also quite useful for a tester to understand, are listed there, special 17799. Quite a useful standard to know. So the first stage before anybody comes in and looks at an application is gathering information. Subtle vulnerabilities are often going unnoticed. Um, what I'm going to do during this talk is give little snippets of stuff I've learned in the past four years. I'm not going to name any names. Uh, you don't have to throw any balls at me. But um, one example, a very large security research team spent three days reverse engineering the encryption code, which was proved to be insecure, but they just decided they had to write a Java GUI to do so. So it was going after the meat and you know, potato type vulnerabilities and ignoring the fact that you could bypass authentication, you could do log file injection. So it's this, there's still this ego in the security industry where you have to go over the biggest and the baddest vulnerability. Not always the case. Um, the knowledge gaps between security testing teams and the business is also a key problem. How many people have gone into a security testing you know, phase and said to the business, right, I'd like all the functional spec, I want you to give me a developer so I can sit down for half a day and understand the application, and by the way, I want all the contact points for this application. How many people here do that on a regular basis? Wow, not many. Okay. So there's obviously an issue there. That's one of the stages that is being overlooked. And as I said before, security testers are overlooking the basic stuff. Um, there's this big thing, I've got to find SQL injection, I've got to drop a table here and there. When really small vulnerabilities, which might seem small to you, like obtaining one cent on every transaction, you know, from doing a currency conversion, that's not that big. But to a bank, when you've got thousands and thousands of transactions happening a day, it is a big thing. So these are just some of the things that are being missed. Um, business logic. I really do expect any security tester to understand the application's functions and security requirements. If you do not understand this, you've just failed. Go home. Um, you've got to understand what the application does. What functionality is expected? What shouldn't happen? How is this application actually supposed to work? You know, because without you understanding this, how are you going to test this application? For every case that you accept as a tester, there should be an abuse case. So the application is for transferring funds between your normal account and your Cayman Islands account. What happens if you don't have any money in your normal account? You have to start building up use and abuse cases. Um, some of the examples there is, how can an attacker subvert this function? Whenever you're looking at financial applications, that has to be in the back of your mind. How can somebody do something bad to this application? Um, 
how many, what's the maximum amounts that can be done? In certain Middle Eastern countries, there are limits to how much money you can transfer between accounts, such as Pakistan and India. They have hard-coded limits. If you go past that, you're breaking government legislation. Does the application let you do this? Um, can the amount be a negative value? So these are all the questions that you should be asking yourself when you're doing a test. By the way, um, rather than ask questions at the end, if you want to just ask questions while I'm going along, it's a lot easier, so just put your hand up or throw money at me. So any questions on that? No? Okay, good. The next stage I'm going to be looking at is authentication. Um, I'm not going to be looking at your standard testing stuff or bypass the, bypassing authentication. I'm going to be looking at some of the areas that we've seen in banking today. Um, there are a few sites that are still using single factor authentication, uh, which I think for a banking application is pretty poor. Um, I've never heard of a broke bank, well, maybe Lehman Brothers, but that was another story. Um, they should all be using more secure authentication methods. The ones that are using single factor authentication, there is an increased th threat from phishing and uh, password guessing attempts. And, you know, amazingly, these banks are still attacked and done this way. There are also poor controls about password choice and the management regarding that password choice. Believe it or not, you can still choose weak passwords in some banks around the world, which is quite shocking in 2008, are we? So, you know, that kind of thing still has to be looked at. Um, the one thing that was in the news a couple of weeks ago was one of your vice whatevers. Um, her account was done recently from the password uh, account retrieval process. You'll be uh, surprised how many times this actually happens with banking applications. A lot of banking apps still use the standard thing of what is your birth date? Where were you born? That kind of stuff. This information is quite easily gleaned from the internet. I think everybody these days has a Facebook account. That kind of information is out there. The other function that we've seen that is often not checked is the account lockout process. So what some banks do is, and we've said in the industry before, if you're brute forcing an account, lock the account after three password retries or three failed attempts, which is all very well and cool. But what happens if you've got 100,000 banking customers and you run against a large word list? You then lock out half your internet banking which causes a big nightmare for 55,000 developers in India who've then got to manually unlock it. Because rarely have I seen an automated tool to unlock all the accounts. It's all a manual process. Shared secrets are an area that has popped up more often. Um, so we have the single factor authentication and then we have areas where you get asked a question that you've already given an answer for. Some of the issues that we've had problems with is that the questions often asked are quite basic. Um, I was testing a banking app last week and you were given three questions and the questions are what's your favorite football team, what's your favorite color, and I think the last one was where was you born. Uh, and, you know, so it's questions like this which are quite basic and rudimentary. Allow a user to start testing, you know, putting in their own secret questions and you'll you know, get around this type of attack. Um, so that. Going on to two-factor authentication, am I talking too fast? Or? No? Okay. Two-factor two authentication tests. Um, one firm that we did notice didn't know how to actually test two-factor authentication, which was a bit interesting. They were testing a banking application at the time. Um, you need to start looking for that the application adequately prevents brute force attacks against the authentication tokens. Um, a lot of the times you're using third-party mechanisms for two-factor authentication, and these are actually quite easily tested. Always ensure that the same challenge is generated if you fail the first one. You'd be amazed how many times we've seen applications where it gives you the secret challenge question and you say, right, well, this is it. So it's all right. Well